Yo, what's up guys, it's SS Modern Warfare here, Game Attack Banter Chicken, and welcome back to JTAG Tutorials. So in this episode, we're looking at how to get multi-disc games working. Now, I've already done a tutorial for multi-disc games, but I'm probably going to do a few more because multi-disc games are changing quite a bit um, in how you install them. So before, uh, well, before the next-gen consoles came out, there was only kind of three methods that I know of anyway uh, of multi-disc games, three different types. So you had the types where you had a single player campaign on one disc and multiplayer on the other disc like Battlefield 3. So if you wanted to play multiplayer, multiplayer you would run the multiplayer disc, if you wanted to play single player you would run the single player disc. So that was simple um, for JTAGs and for uh, other types, the other type was uh, you had an install disc like GTA 5 and Halo 4 which is episode 19 of JTAG tutorials I show how to install that but the way that one worked was you had an install disc that you would install to the hard drive and then you'd run the play disc to play the game um, so on a JTAG you'd have to copy the content folder from the install disc um, and put that in the content on your hard drive and then just run the play disc off an external device that was simple um, the other type is what we're going to be covering in this video which is multi-disc games where usually it's on single player games only but and um, there's probably examples of multiplayer discs that do it as well where you'll have multiple discs you'll go through the campaign you'll reach a certain point in the campaign at the end of a mission or something and it'll prompt you to insert the next disc now this can be a problem on JTAS because how do you insert the next disc when it's all the hard drives are all on uh, the ISOs I mean are all on the hard drive and there's no discs to actually run so that can make things a bit complicated to get it installed on the JTAG so I'm going to show you how to do that in this video I may also show you a uh, I may also do a tutorial for Watch Dogs as well because that's also uh, a new sort of slightly different method of installing multi-discs for that game um, but this is going to be more frequent because uh, you know because we now that we have next-gen consoles and games for that are on dual layer blu-ray disc which are like 40 gigabytes now obviously the Xbox 360 can't or doesn't have such high resolution textures so the file sizes are a lot lower but it's still going to be you know games that come out on the Xbox one and the PS4 the the Xbox 360 alternatives are going to be in definitely at least two discs but usually or even three or four discs um, eventually is what's going to happen and that's what we've got with uh, Wolfenstein which is the example game that I'm going to be covering in this tutorial so for Wolfenstein we've got four discs um, that we're going to have to somehow install and get them working and as you saw up there on the screen uh, it just keeps saying insert disk 2, insert disk 2, um, which you can't do obviously on a JTAG unless you have a flash drive and you burn them to a disk, which is just a waste of disks really for a JTAG, because you should be able to do it all from the hard drive. So what we're going to do here, as you can see up on computer now, we've got uh, Wolfenstein. Now I've got all four disks um, extracted. Uh, they're all 8 gigs for some reason, but when you extract them they're less than that which doesn't really make sense, but there you go. You've got um, four disks here, four ISO files, disk one, two, and three, and four. And if, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna first of all convert them into a games on demand version. Um, this isn't gonna entirely solve the problem, but it's, it's one step towards it. So you can do this without transferring it into a godded form or games on demand version, but for me anyway it tends to work better when it's converted to a games on demand version so it can be done just with the ISO forms by putting them in a certain order and I think it's games then the name of the game then disk 1 folder disk 2 folder and it, having the extracted ISOs in each one that doesn't always work for me which is why I'm showing you how to convert it into a games on demand version first because it's Definite, I've definitely had better results, put it that way. I've had better results when it's converted to a games on demand version. So what we're going to do 
is going to download a program called ISO to God, which will be in the description. So be a zip file, just download it, extract it, pop it in a folder on your desktop, and you'll have it like this. Um, you won't have the converts folder, just ignore that. But um, that's what you'll have ISO to God. And you're also obviously going to need the ISO, which you can get off, you know, the Pirate Bay, which I don't want to go into too much deep. Really? Okay. Um, how about that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I don't want to go into too much detail on the... Uh, on how to do this but on how to get the ISO but basically you can either download it from the Pirate Bay by typing in the name of the game then Xbox 360 all caps search for it there's it there um, that looks about right the size um, so go ahead and download it or if you can get it off Xbox360ISO.com if you're willing to pay their premium costs for their downloading uh, file sharing sites that they put up there all the links on there seem to be premium now which is uh, ridiculous but if you're willing to pay for that then by all means go ahead and do that but anyway once you have it downloaded make sure you extract them all so you've got the four discs like this you've got them all extracted there disc 1, disc 2, disc 3, disc 4 um, the reason I'm skipping through all this um, detail is because I've already shown, showed it in episode 4 of JTA Tutorials um, so go ahead and watch that if you want that explained in more detail um, but what we're going to do here is run ISO to God run it as administrator I recommend uh, you're going to add the ISOs browse for the image location so disk 1 open output location I'm just going to put it to the desktop um, and the ISO rebuild location I just created a f new folder called temp rebuild and that is the folder I'm going to use uh, here for that and you can see it's detected the name of the game the title ID the media ID it's even got the little picture there and we're just going to add the ISO and we're just going to repeat this for each disk until we have them all added uh, simple as that Okay, so that's all four disks added in there. One, two, three, and four. All you're going to do at this point is just click the convert button and it's going to start converting it from an ISO to games on demand version. Um, and it's going to do that on every single disk. So I'm just going to pause the video because this can take a while because it's got to do all four disks. And I'll be back with you once it has converted all of those. So as you can see it has now finished its process and it has created a folder on the desktop which I specified called 425307F5. If it's not in the output location then it will be inside the temp rebuild folder or the temporary rebuild folder. So um, or whichever folder you specified it to put the rebuild thing in. So either it'll either be in there or it'll be in the output location so you'll have a folder with the media or title ID I mean title ID of the game right there inside there you've got this folder and then in there you've got each of these represents each disk same with these so it's got all four disks converted in there so now you've got the problem of transferring this folder to the JTAG now I think ISO to God has got a FTP option to, as it's converting it, it will also upload it to the console if you have it connected through FTP. You can also manually transfer it over with FileZilla um, by connecting to the console and just dragging and dropping. Um, if you have, I mean, that's going to take a long time with FTP. You're just going to have to deal with that uh, unless you have got a external hard drive that has enough storage space on it. Um, like me I've got a well it's actually not got enough storage space on it at the moment but I could remove stuff to get that on but I've already got it transferred across but what you would do is simply copy it to your external hard drive and then you'll have it on here as you can see and then from there I can just plug this external hard drive into my Xbox and copy it from the external to the internal hard drive 
um, and you must have an internal hard drive for this. It needs to be at least probably a 60 gig hard drive unless you're using a laptop hard drive. As long as it's over the size of this folder which is 21 gigs. So as long as you've got enough storage capacity on the internal drive to store that then you're fine. The problem a lot of people come to me and say, oh, I don't have an, in an internal hard drive, so how do I do it? Uh, you don't. Just get an internal hard drive. It's as simple as that. Um, you really should have an internal hard drive for your JTAG by now, especially uh, when you've got you know, next-gen games that are coming out in the 360, which are in four disks and two disks, and you're, you're going to have to just get an internal hard drive. So... Um, Go ahead, transfer that over to the Xbox, and I'll show you what you have to do from there. Okay guys, I've got my um, external hard drive hooked up now, so what we're going to do, I'm on XHIT's menu at the moment, so we just copy it from the external hard drive, go to the hard drive, which is HDD1, scroll down to Content folder, then go into the folder with all the zeros, and then just paste the 425307F5 folder in here paste it in here now I've already got it copied over just to save time so um, it's gonna ask me to overwrite which I don't want to do but you would just paste it in there let it copy over it will take a while because it is what 21 gigs or something like that and uh, once you have it fully copied over you can then go back to the original dashboard by dashboarding and holding down right bumper if you've got dash launch set up the same way as in episode 3 Head over to my games. It may take a little while for it to pop up, um, but eventually you should see it popping up here. As you can see, you got Wolfenstein Disc One, Two, and Three, and Four. And we'll just go ahead and launch Disc One. Now this is not finished, okay? In no way. We've still got a couple more things to do to get this to work. Swap the discs. Alright, select hard drive and what it's going to do is it's going to ask you to <coughs> install it. As you can see it will say it's installing, um, so just let it install. It will probably take quite a long time again to install, so just leave it to install. Uh, but with the power of video editing we can skip past that, so here we go, fully installed. And even if you try and um, play it, it's not going to work. See if I try and resume game because I've already started playing this so let's try resume and it wants me to insert disc 3 because that's how far I've got on the game so far um, and if you click new game it will ask you to insert disc 2 um, so it's still doing that it's still it's still not swapping to the next um, the next game disc or the next game disc file so there's two ways we can sort this we can either use freestyle dash or we can use um, something else. So it, I'll show you Freestyle Dash first because it's pretty simple and then I'll show you if you don't use Freestyle Dash I'll show you how you can do it with other things. So Freestyle Dash has a built-in swap function so well the latest, well Freestyle Dash version 3 has a built-in swap function like the older ones you had to have some kind of plug-in but it's all built in now so all you have to do is add it to the game paths so we'll just go manage game paths add a game path change path head to content folder with all the zeros and then what was it 425307F5 was the game and we've got our game data in here so we'll just select directory we look at how many paths there are so how many folders does it have to go into to access the game so we've got HDD1 content 000 425 and then 07 so that's five so I'll go one up from that and go six because it has to go in those extra folders to locate the game files so I'm going to select Xbox 360 as the game press X to save and Hopefully it'll detect the games. It looks like it has anyway. Loading. And there we go, it's detected all four of them. So let's launch disk one again. I'll skip past this of course. 
Okay, so now we'll try again and it should work this time, hopefully. Because because we're launching it through Freestyle Dash, it's got that built-in auto-swap feature, so I'm just going to resume game and it said it wanted disc 3, so we'll accept. And it's instantly do done it, swapping the discs. You'll get the swapping disc screen popping up in just a second. There we go. Um, and this will take a little while and it should continue my game and run the disk3 file. I'll just give this a little bit. A bit of luck. Yep, and there we go. As you can see, the game is continuing from where I was last up on it. I think I found and something. this is technically running see? disk 3 even Ancient though we artifact. started disk 1. Highly technological in nature. And it's done the auto swap for us. Parchment. Okay, so Looks let's like go Hebrew. ahead and go I back to, to reverse the original dashboard. See, the problem with this is this will only work with Freestyle Dash. If you add it into Freestyle Dash, you have to launch the game from Freestyle Dash, otherwise it won't do the auto swap. So what if you don't have Freestyle Dash or what if you just don't use Freestyle Dash for whatever reason and you want to launch it within the original dashboard like this and get it to swap the discs because it won't um, only works with Freestyle Dash or what if you want to launch it from XCX menu and run the default XCX or even Xbox 360 Neighborhood if you want to use Xbox 360 Neighborhood as well to launch the game. Um, then it's not going to do the auto swap. It's only going to work within Freestyle Dash. So the other way that you can do it to work in XCX Menu, Neighborhood, and the original dashboard is um, to use Dash Launch. But you're not supposed to do this with Freestyle Dash. So if you're using the Freestyle Dash method, just leave it as it is. But if you're not using Freestyle Dash and you want to do XCX Menu, and if you want to launch it with XCX menu or anything else, then use the dash launch method. So the dash launch method, we start the default XCX for dash launch, we go to behavior, scroll down to auto swap and enable it. It says if enabled, dash launch will perform automatic disk swapping. But it says warning, do not enable if you use freestyle dash or swap XCX. So like I said, don't use this with freestyle dash if you're using freestyle dash. So I'll go ahead, save that to the launch.ini. We'll back out again, which is actually going to take me back into Freestyle Dash, which is not what I want. So let's go back into. In fact, I don't think you can launch it in XCX menu. I shouldn't have said that because it's a games on demand version. Um, but let's launch it from the original dashboard now, and it should. Uh, it should swap the discs using dash launches auto swap feature all right so now we'll go ahead and launch this and it should perform auto swap even though we're not launching it through freestyle dash this time so we'll resume game yes and there you go you can see it's performing the swap and it is working fine so thanks for watching i hope this uh, video helped you guys out don't forget to subscribe for more JTAG tutorials and like the video if you liked it, comment if you have any questions and um, I might actually have a Watch Dogs tutorial out at some point soon as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.